Okay, so I'm going to talk about, I'm from INRIA in Paris, and um, so I'm going to talk about object recognition. So this is a joint work with, uh, uh, with uh, my colleagues, mostly done by students, Maximo Kapp. Uh, okay, so we are interested in object recognition, but we are interested in uh, even more general questions like uh, computer vision. So one slice of computer vision is, uh, is dynamic scene understanding. So, so for example, you would want, given a video like this, you want to recognize different things, like what is the scene, what is the person is doing, also, of course, what are the objects. Uh, and um, by the way, so this video was done about five years ago by hand, and um, now I'm pretty sure that most of it can be done actually automatically, maybe apart from this last uh, kidnapping event, which is probably would be still quite difficult for neural networks. Uh, so as you, most of you know, so this is uh, vision. Vision is hard. So why is it hard? Because uh, what computer sees is this matrix of uh, numbers. And uh, so if you think that, or if your computer starts to hallucinate that there is a woman in a red dress there, so you should not be wondering why it's uh, doing so. Uh, okay, so uh, what has happened recently, so that's also partly why we are all here. So there have been lots of progress in, um, in, uh, very, like in the last two, three years in conditional neural networks, so deep learning. And, uh, but deep learning is not, uh, uh, is not new, so as you may know also, the fa just a few facts. So the ConvNets existed since uh, 80s, and they were hugely successful for character recognition, but it took um, as 15 years or more to actually make it work for real images. And the breakthrough came with ImageNet uh, two years ago. And as we see here, so ImageNet uh, challenge been going on for several years. So in 2012, the error, error with neural network, the error really dropped first time uh, hugely. And this, this year, or last year, in 2014, so we got uh, numbers really down. So it's really uh, going forward. Okay, so numbers are great. So let's look at uh, images. So, so what, uh, what do we see in ImageNet? So this is a, b a bit caricaturistic uh, illustration, but most of the images in ImageNet actually are very object-centered and clean, right? So, so these are images of tables and chairs. And now if you look at the images of uh, tables and chairs on Flickr, so it will look very much different, okay? And uh, so if you just learn the uh, classifier on ImageNet and then apply of, or to images of this kind of what you see on the left, uh, it, doesn't, uh, it works, but it doesn't really work very good. So, so the natural question, so how do we make uh, uh, neural networks work on also complex scenes like this? So cluttered scenes, so how do we uh, do this? So one straightforward idea is, okay, so there is a, uh, lots of scale and... Uh, uh, position variations in natural images, so why don't we just tile the image in different pieces and apply our uh, pre-trained classifier to it, right? So uh, that's how we are going to do it, so, right, so we can just do a sliding window, just tile the images, and if we have labels for each of these uh, rectangles, right, for each object, and maybe if there is no object, so we can just label it as a background, uh, so then we can uh, plug it in as input to our standard uh, neural network, which you see on the right, uh, and uh, so down, so if we are training, then we are given the labels of all, for the, all these bound, uh, bounding boxes, we can backpropagate the gradient, so we know how to do it, right? Uh, so there is a few problems with this. So one is that uh, we may have little data, right? So for example, uh, say in Pascal, if you want to recognize object in Pascal, so there are just 10,000 images, and uh, training 60 million parameters from CNN, you couldn't do it, but again, so it's not going to, uh, to fly very, very high. Uh, so, so this problem actually been addressed by uh, quite many of papers last year. And uh, so the standard solution is just to take uh, ImageNet pre-train network and uh, pretend that we have trained uh, on our problem. But actually, it turns out if you just transfer, you copy paste the weights of uh, convolutional layers to the uh, uh, to the new, your new network and just post-train a few layers or so apply SVM on top of it, so it's going to do quite well. Okay, so, so here is the, some results which are were trained on uh, Pascal images, again, so just 10,000 images, uh, so, but complex scenes, so here we see that, um, by the way, so what we see, we, not only just uh, classification, but also localization, because if you run the classifier in the sliding window manner, so we can see the localized firings and we do it over different scales, so we see like a big firing on the, for dining table in the middle, and also it gets 
quite difficult objects in the background, like potted plants or software, which is uh, barely visible here. Right, so that's uh, worked pretty good. So it actually works very good. So, uh, so here's one, another image which um, made me wonder what's going on. And okay, you see obviously, so bus recognition is very good. Uh, it, it gets car in the background, which is uh, kind of hard to get. And then it gets a person, and uh, so where is the person? So the person is just next to the bus. And by the way, so there was, there was no person class in uh, ImageNet, so one can think of, okay, ImageNet has pre-trained everything, but actually a person was not a class in the ImageNet competition. Okay, so it really works. Um, so let's see what's, what's missing. So okay, say uh, problem one is, uh, okay, it's not entirely solved, maybe the classification results in the 90s now, so there's still uh, a few percent um, uh, to get, but uh, so let's see what other problems we can get. And uh, so another problem is uh, annotation. So what I've described so far is, um, is uh, based on the fact that we have labels for all the bounding boxes, right? And this is tedious. Uh, so it's, uh, first, it's difficult to, to label, especially if you want to label all the objects in the image. This is uh, going to be really hard. And it's also subjective. For example, like a person, uh, like if you see, so how even putting a bounding box around an object with lots of occlusion, it's not trivial, okay? So you can have lots of, objects in the image, different classes, so you really don't want to spend the years of labeling them. Uh, so the question is, can we just live with the image level labels, right? So say if we have a just, if we know just that image has bicycle and a person, uh, so can we still train CNNs? And um, so the motivation for this, practical motivation, is that actually images have lots of uh, image level labels, either by tags or uh, by people just writing text on it. Even if you uh, s want to spend some effort on annotation, so still an annotating image level labels is much easier. Right, so, and again, so there is lots of data which have each noisy data, text data, which give a clue what is in the image. So how are we going to do it? Uh, again, so what's the goal? It's just given an image and the labels, image level labels of the training, you want to uh, learn uh, complex scenes and also localized objects. So uh, surprisingly, what's the only th basic thing which we do, actually there are three of them, but the, the main thing which uh, makes this thing work is this uh, max pooling layer, which you see on the, on the right. Uh, so basically, it's the same network as before. So the only thing which uh, comes at the end is that instead of having a, uh, uh, like a one, well, instead of, uh, so we are, we are aggregating all responses for score map with the just max pooling. Uh, so I'll uh, go through in a, uh, three slides what's going on. So, so one, one thing, which practical thing, which, need, which is needed to make it work is to have a, a very efficient convolution for uh, what, just scanning all positions. So if you want to cut the image at different tiles and pass it through a network, so it's going to take forever. So you need a, so this, we, have, we implemented this, but I think NVIDIA has a library also which uh, makes it very efficient. So, and the second thing is max pooling, right? So, so that uh, you have a score map, and at the training, right? So this is not test, so at the training, you don't know where the object is, but you just, if you have a high response, you're going to assume, okay, if there is a motorbike here, I'm going to assume that my motorbike is at the position of the high response. And the third part is, um, so we, we switched the loss because uh, like, uh, we, we assume that image can have many, many different objects, uh, so, so we needed a different loss. So uh, uh, schematically, so here's a, um, what we have. So in the input, we have a image plus uh, labels, like there is airplane, there is, a, there is no car, there is no chair. Uh, and um, then uh, what's going on in the training, so we are, for air, say airplane, for the correct uh, uh, score map of the image, so we're going to say that, uh, yes, if there is a max, this is a good one. So we're going to push it up. Uh, and, uh, but if, if we get uh, for, the, uh, score, for the class which is not present in the image, like for example for a car, so we get uh, here firing on the wheel of the, of the uh, airplane, so, so we're going to just suppress it, okay? So this is, acts as a hard negative mining in a way, so you, uh, you get the false positive responses and you know there is no car, so we're going to just press it down. So, so here is an uh, interesting video which shows what happens during training, right? So uh, when you start training, so what you're going to see is a few snapshots of score maps for a uh, motorbike uh, class for these different images uh, over training iterations, 
right? So at the, the beginning, the network doesn't know anything, and then uh, for simple objects, so simple views, standard views of motorbikes, so we are, we are getting res localized responses quite earlier in the training, and so I'm going to play it again. So if you uh, observe, for example, this motorbike, which is left second from the top, which is a very strange view, un unusual view, so we see that it doesn't get it from the beginning, but as uh, more, more training iterations, so we eventually get it. So let's get some results. So here are results on uh, Microsoft Coco. So trained uh, for, just as I said, so images plus image level labels, 80 object classes. So we see um, now crosses, which are localizing the response of objects in, um, in these images. So we see lots of uh, uh, good results, right? So different objects. Um, so we are just here, we're localizing just one max per image. So, so if we see several people in the image, so we'll, we'll just say one person. Actually, uh, there are maxes also for other people, so we could easily uh, get the other people. So it makes some mistakes, um, but they're also interesting. So if you look at the top left image, so there's a bench here, right? So it's a kind of a plausible mistake. Uh, some more results. And uh, so one interesting also mistake, so you see the person. Actually, you can't see it, but uh, so it, the network says there is a tie. Actually, the person doesn't have a tie, but uh, it does hallucinate tie on the very precisely correct spot where it should be. And that's interesting because we never, so in the training, we never, we never shown where the tie should be, so it just figured out by itself. Okay, so uh, uh, to end up, so actually you may ask, okay, so we had, we've been pre-training uh, the network on ImageNet, now we are recognizing objects, so most of these objects been in the training, not training, ImageNet training, so, so what's the deal? Maybe uh, uh, it's not so interesting. So actually, if you apply exactly the same algorithm, just different training data, in this case it's actions, Okay, it's still images, but uh, we are going to recognize actions, so it, it works as well. So what happens is that if it, in a training, you give an image and you say, okay, person is reading, person is um, riding horse, okay, and uh, at the test you also get uh, correct results, very good results, but you also get localizations. And in this case, like localizing, for example, reading is uh, even putting a bounding box around reading, so what, what is it? It's hard to, it's very subjective. So, so we, won't, we don't even want to do it, so, but the, if you trade, train it in a, this weekly supervised manner, it uh, gets it pretty well, and the images are quite diverse. So there are, uh, in this case, so it's uh, Pascal, um, 10 classes, uh, action recognition, so it gets it pretty well. Um, so some few false, false positive again, interesting. So you see using computer on the left, so that's uh, quite natural, so the guy's opening a pizza box and uh, the phoning is also quite explainable. Okay, so that's, uh, that's about it. So in summary, so we've got uh, weekly supervised training and for recognizing and localizing objects in, or in actions and actually other concepts in, uh, in complex scenes, um, as you see here. Uh, so more details, so of course we have not just have Images, we also have numbers, so, so we have a paper under submission, which is, you can access through our web page. Uh, so what's, what we think, why this is interesting, like going next, uh, uh, is that this weekly surprise, the learning, uh, eventually, so as you see here, so there is, we can start reasoning about the relations between objects, like what is left to, the, to what, or what is person is doing, and so on. And um, so doing this in a large scale, I believe, it will be very hard if you really have to label everything. So doing it in weekly surprise way uh, should uh, give a potential to uh, like start doing relations between objects, between actions in time. Um, and also what, and the advantage of this is the method is really simple. You just put a max pool at the end and it does the, uh, everything. Okay, thank you.